This is 17 News with continuing coronavirus coverage. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Kitsky. Well, Governor Gavin Newsom is streaming live every day at noon to give an update on the coronavirus crisis in our state. Today, he is providing an update on the state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will bring him to you as soon as he becomes available. In the meantime... To the latest on an Amber Alert that woke many of us up overnight, the child is now safe. It all started with a shooting that left a woman and the suspect dead. We've since learned that the woman was seven months pregnant. She died, but medical staff were unable to save, or they were able to save the baby who is now being treated at the hospital. That shooting happened around 8.30 last night on Florence Street in Lamont. Deputies say the shooting suspect is Javier Vile, the father of the woman's two-year-old son, Elias. An Amber Alert was posted after, after deputies say Vile took the toddler. Within a few hours, Elias was recovered safely, though it is not clear how. But KCSO says Vile took off again to a trailer on Taft Highway near Weeble Road. The suspect was also located there with the vehicle and uh, fired at law enforcement personnel. The uh, male adult barricaded himself. A SWAT call out was initiated. Uh, the subject continued firing at law enforcement personnel, and law enforcement personnel returned fire, and the suspect was struck and was pronounced deceased at the scene. Now, no law enforcement officers were hurt in the standoff. The investigation is still ongoing. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Kern County Sheriff's Office. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. Another spike in cases was reported over the weekend. The total is up to 444. That number includes eight non-residents. More than 3,500 people have tested negative, and more than 2,500 people are still waiting for their results. Three people have died. Well, here's how those cases break down by age. 21 children have tested positive, 250 are adults 18 to 49, 117 cases are people between the ages of 50 to 64, and 48 are ages 65 and older. The five regions are broad and defined by county health officials. They will not release more specific data about the locations of these cases. The area known as Bakersfield East, which includes Lamont and Arvin, has 201 cases. That's the most in the county. There are 150 in the area known as Bakersfield West, 55 in the Valley region, that's the western half of the county, and 14 cases confirmed in the mountains and deserts in the desert communities. Well, a Target spokesperson has confirmed that an employee working at a Shafter location has tested positive for COVID-19. According to the spokesperson, the employee works at the Target Distribution Center located at 3700 Zachary Avenue. Target released a statement that says, we're working in close partnership with local health departments and can share that a Target team member at our distribution center on Zachary Avenue in Shafter, California, has a positive case of the coronavirus. Our top priority is the health and safety of our team members and guests, and we're taking a number of steps to move forward. The rest of that statement is on our website, KGET.com. Well, several clinics and urgent care facilities over offer testing for the coronavirus. Accelerated urgent care on Coffee and Stockdale is one. All locations for Omni Health and Priority Urgent Care. Clinica Sierra Vista is offering free testing, and local hospitals test patients as well. Plus, Clinica Sierra Vista and Dignity offer telehealth services so you can get a checkup from home and find out if you need a test. And if you don't know, these are the symptoms of COVID-19. The most common includes fever, a dry cough, meaning there won't be mucus, fatigue, and difficulty breathing. Less common symptoms include aches and pains, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, and diarrhea. Remember, you may be sick with the virus up to two weeks before developing symptoms. Keep in mind, flu symptoms are similar, but muscle and joint pain, a runny nose, and headache will be more common for the flu. Meantime, a lot of people have allergies right now. Those symptoms include sneezing, coughing, a runny or stuffy nose, and itchy eyes. And it is important to note, although you may want to rub your eyes, do not touch your face. That's how viruses like COVID-19 and the flu can spread. Again, if you think you have symptoms of coronavirus, call your doctor before going to their office. 
And learning from home won't just be online anymore. For the rest of the school year, KETN, the local education TV station, will be airing math lessons and it all starts today. There are 30-minute lessons starting with kindergarten at 8.30 and ending with calculus at 4 p.m. And students will be able to call tutors during the show. You can find the full schedule plus channel listings on the superintendent website. That's kern.org. And Chevron is helping local hospitals purchase personnel protective equipment for frontline staff. Dignity Health, Mercy, and Memorial Hospitals, along with Adventist Health Bakersfield, both received a $100,000 grant from Chevron. That money will go, go towards the proper equipment needed for those on the front line, as it is vital for the safety of the physicians, nurses, and other staff. Adventist Health President Charlotte Briggs adds that the gift from Chevron is a prime example of corporate partnership investing in community wellness and the stewardship of teamwork. Chevron is encouraging community members to donate and help match the money from that grant. Community members may be given a tax-deductible donation to help in the pandemic effort by visiting the Adventist Health Bakersfield. Well, studies are pointing to neurological problems from COVID-19. Patients with severe cases may be suffering for several symptoms. Also, mental health is taking a blow during the coronavirus pandemic. How crisis centers are operating to make sure everyone is safe. Stay with us. In your 17 Health Watch, patients with severe cases of COVID-19 may also experience neurological issues. Researchers looked at data from 214 hospitalized patients in Wuhan, China. They found more than a third displayed neurological symptoms like confusion, delirium, and muscle pain. Patients with these symptoms were more likely to have more severe cases of the virus. Now we have Newsom. He is here to talk about the latest on the coronavirus here in the state of California. Let's take it over to Governor Newsom and hear what he has to say. Collaborative spirit advanced now in states large and small all across the United States, but none stronger than the relationships we have formed in Washington State and the state of Oregon. Uh, we just sent out a joint statement of a shared vision uh, for a process and protocol, a framework we refer to it uh, for reopening, uh, not just within our states, but more broadly uh, as a region. I don't want to overstate uh, this vision. Uh, I don't want to overstate this framework, and I don't want to understate uh, the imperative of meeting this moment by continuing to practice appropriate social distancing and practicing physical distancing so we can continue to bend the curve. But we are at a point of time uh, where not dissimilar to the announcement that was made uh, an hour or so ago on the East Coast uh, that we're beginning to socialize conversations uh, we've been having over the course of many days in the case of the Oregon and Washington governor uh, into the beginning of last week where we began a process of establishing more formally what it would look like and how we could begin the process uh, of the kind of incremental uh, release of the stay-at-home orders uh, that advanced the fundamental principle of keeping people healthy, keeping people safe, using science to guide our decision-making and not political pressure, uh, and continuing to do what we can to share our best practices and share our resolve and ultimately advance the kind of results that everybody is expecting. We look forward to collaborating further uh, with other governors uh, along the western states, but we look forward, in addition to that, to continuing the collaborative spirit that extends well beyond just the west coast of the United States, uh, forming perspectives and opinions, sharing best practices, and ultimately advancing the cause that unite all of us, and that is the cause of reopening our economy and doing so in a safe and strategic and responsible way. And to that end, I want to be very specific. Tomorrow, we will lay out our California-based thinking uh, on that effort. For weeks now, I've been previewing uh, that the state of California is putting together a bottom-up plan, a framework uh, for targeted interventions and easing of restrictions in the state to allow us uh, to toggle between uh, approaching issues on the population basis versus on an individual basis. Uh, we're going to lay that out, as I say, uh, as detailed uh, a plan as we can at this stage uh, tomorrow at the noon press 
press conference, but I just want to acknowledge and thank uh, the governors of Washington, the governors of Oregon, uh, Governor Brown and Governor Inslee for their just ongoing partnership, uh, their incredible uh, support and the collaborative spirit that, by the way, uh, goes well beyond uh, just this moment. I want to just extend that spirit uh, was on display at scale last year uh, with the forest fires that we had, particularly in Northern California, uh, where they brought down mutual aid engines uh, from Oregon and into Washington State, uh, allowed us to concentrate our resources uh, in some of the hot spots in Southern California to address last year's wildfire season. So again, it's the spirit of collaboration, spirit of partnership, a recognition that this pandemic, the virus, knows no boundaries, knows no borders. Uh, you can't build walls around it, uh, and you can't deny uh, basic fundamental facts. And again, uh, before I transition, uh, we will be driven by facts, we'll be driven by evidence, we'll be driven by science, we'll be driven by our hub public health advisors, uh, and we'll be driven uh, by the collaborative spirit uh, that defines the best of us at this incredibly important moment. What also defines, I think, the best of us at this incredibly important moment is to recognize that disparities persist, uh, that disparities need to be addressed in real time, uh, that are highlighted and that are exacerbated in moments like this. One of those areas is the well-being of our children. Uh, so much has been discussed about physical health issues and mental health issues. We were very pleased by the outstanding leadership and partnerships that we were able to form uh, last week where we socialized the details through our Surgeon General uh, of resources that are made available uh, to address uh, the stresses and the travails many of us are feeling and providing resource guides in a very culturally competent way on the basis of age uh, and geography throughout the state of California. But the persistent issue uh, of our children, particularly children in our welfare system, uh, particularly children that are, quote unquote, at risk, remains a, a vexing challenge, particularly at a time uh, when we have stay at home orders, which reduce and significantly limit the number of in person visits uh, as it relates to our child protective services, what they're providing in terms of casework uh, in real time, in person, uh, that is so important to address vulnerable communities. When the schools are closed, that's another point of contact where people are able to make referrals uh, based upon the interaction of children, the interaction to school nurses, to one another, interactions uh, with our caregivers, uh, not least of which, obviously, our teachers. Uh, those referrals are down. Those in-home visits are down as a consequence of the virus. Uh, but what, not, what is not down is our guard and our commitment and resolve uh, to work around that and work through that. And so today uh, we're announcing a $42 million effort, substantially supported by the state of California, $40.6 million of the $42 million direct statewide support coming from uh, the leadership, the Assembly, and the Senate that have afforded us these resources to invest in building supports all throughout the state of California. And what I mean by building supports is along the following. We're tracking about 86,500 children within our system, about 59,000 uh, specific to the foster care system. Uh, we want to extend supports uh, small and large along these lines. Resource referrals, uh, more amplification of our 211 system, more connection with the 211 call center to family resource centers, more support uh, for our frontline employees, county based employees, our partnership with our labor leaders at SCIU, a uh, perfect example uh, of the credible work that's done on a daily basis, health and human service, all throughout the state of California to provide them more resources, more support. Uh, and more capacity uh, to continue uh, to do what we can uh, for not just knocking on every door, to knock on those doors of those that are most vulnerable, and to continue the kind of telehealth engagement uh, and virtual outreach, as well as phone calls uh, to those caseloads, uh, and to make sure that they have the support uh, to meet uh, the magnitude and the scale uh, of our challenges. One of the magnitude and scale uh, concerns we have is the number of our foster kids that are emancipated on a monthly basis. Roughly 200 
young children are emancipated every month in the state of California. Uh, at this moment, we think we should extend the emancipation uh, process, and we're providing uh, resources, millions of dollars, to do just that, to extend the time where people can stay uh, with their current caregivers and get the kind of support and food uh, that they deserve. That's number one. Uh, number two, we are providing an additional $200 a month uh, for families that are most at risk. Uh, thousands and thousands of families will get the benefit of that contribution uh, to help with food and to help with other incidentals uh, at a time, again, of deep, deep need. Uh, we're blessed in the state of California to have an incredible director of our Department of Social services, Kim Johnson. You just heard the latest from Governor Gavin Newsom, and he's providing an update on the state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. He is talking about an ongoing partnership with other states and other governors across the nation. And tomorrow they will be laying out a detailed plan of California's response to COVID-19. He also mentioned that the most at risk right now are those children in the wel welfare system. And he is talking about how they do not have enough in-person interactions, especially right now being out of school and being home. They are investing millions of dollars statewide in order to invest in the support, offering more connection for those in the system. And if you want to continue watching everything that Governor Newsom is saying, you can go online to our Facebook page and continue watching his response. Now let's send things over to Kevin Charette. Kevin, it's a gorgeous day outside. What can we expect for the rest of our day? Well, Nicole, I hope you had a great Easter. I hope everybody around uh, Kern County had a good Easter. And we have a little bit of cloud cover out there for you this afternoon. But we are seeing clearing skies right now, 68 degrees and mostly sunny uh, in Arvin. A beautiful sky there. And then uh, Wasco, mostly sunny, 70 degrees. So warming up nicely out of Wasco. Fraser Park, you can see partly sunny skies, 55 degrees. And then Golden Hills, 54 degrees and the clouds hanging around. 69 for Bakersfield at this time. No winds to talk about Currently for you overnight, we're 58, so well above our normal of 49. Normal high today is 74. We'll be close to that, and you can see temperatures running into the upper 60s for the valley. We've got 55 out of Tehachapi and 60 for Lake Isabella Ridgecrest at 70. And here's a look at the satellite and radar, and the clouds are shrinking, and that will continue as we go throughout the day here. But I'll tell you, last week's rain really helped us out in the month of April, and here's where we stand: two and a half inches. We're up two and a quarter inches, and for the water year, we're just under. Six seven inches of rain, so we are up an inch from where we should be. And we take a look at the last five Aprils, as mentioned, 2.5 inches in the gauge, so wetter than uh, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, but even further than that, when I went back on records, the wettest April now in 23 years. We need the rain, because remember, we're in that moderate drought. Here's a look at the uh, regional view, and not much to show you, some clouds along the coastal areas, but that is about it, and temperatures today will be into the 60s, except for Fresno, 75 degrees, but mid-60s down to the south. Ridging is going to start to take over our weather pattern here, and whenever we talk about that, we start to see some warmer temperatures, but by midweek, we're going to track a system just off our coast, and that will bring some clouds in for the weekend. I don't think we're going to get any rain out of it. The models want to try to bring in some showers, but just not sold on that yet, so I'll be watching that carefully. So the rest of today, 74 in Bakersfield, 75 in Delano, 72 in Taft, and then for the mountains. We'll look for mostly sunny skies uh, throughout the afternoon, uh, 57 in Fraser Park, along with Tehachapi, 60s for the Kern River Valley. Lake is about 65 and mostly sunny out in the desert. And a high of 67 in Mojave. Here's your extended forecast. Tomorrow, 77. Wednesday, 79. And Thursday, we peak at 82 before some clouds move in for the weekend. By Saturday, Sunday, lower 70s. And then for the mountains, you're also going to see the warm-up. By Thursday, look at that, 67. And then upper 50s Saturday and Sunday. And for the Kern River Valley, beautiful weather here the next several days. By Thursday, we're at 75 with a little cool down and some cloud cover heading into the weekend. But overall, a great start to the work week. We'll be right back. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. 
Welcome back in your 17 Business Watch. Google is rolling out changes to search results to make it easier to find virtual healthcare options. The search engine will highlight more telehealth services, which have seen a surge in demand during the virus outbreak. Healthcare providers that offer a virtual option will be able to add a link on their business profile, which will appear in search results and on Google Maps. If the provider has a page dedicated to information about COVID-19, Google will automatically surface a link to that page as well. And Amazon is putting new grocery delivery customers on a new wait list. Many shoppers recently found they could not place orders due to a lack of available delivery slots. Amazon said it would wait list new customers starting today while working on adding capacity each week. Amazon also plans to shorten hours at some Whole Foods stores so its employees can fill online grocery orders. In recent weeks, it increased the number of Whole Foods stores offering grocery pickup to more than 150 locations. Patients. Well, stay with us. 17 News will be back after the break. Welcome back. Well, patients with severe cases of COVID-19 may also experience neurological issues. Researchers looked at data from 214 hospitalized patients in Wuhan, China. They found more than a third displayed neurological symptoms like confusion, delirium, and muscle pain. Patients with these symptoms were more likely to have more severe cases of the virus. They also showed fewer typical symptoms such as a fever and a cough. And as the coronavirus continues to impact the lives of many around the world, some are finding it very difficult to cope. Steve Patterson reports. In here, the ringing never stops. Suicide Prevention Center Crisis Line. My name's Rebecca. What's your name? 24 hours a day, crisis counselors at California's Dede Hirsch Suicide Prevention Center field an endless barrage of calls from people at their lowest moments. The nation's oldest and largest suicide hotline averages about 130,000 calls every year. Our job is really to provide emotional support to those that are either in suicidal crisis or emotional crisis, whether that's caused by a disaster or not. Carolyn Levitin oversees the hundreds of volunteers and workers answering the phones every day. They're there to be empathetic, to validate what someone's experiencing, and to also provide resources and other options other than suicide. Now, with cases of the coronavirus rippling across the country, millions isolating at home, and hundreds dying every day, the hotline's call volume is exploding with fears about the disease. By the end of February, just 20 callers expressed worry about the virus. By the end of March, that number skyrocketed to over 1,800, with one in five expressing a desire for suicide. It's very concerning and traumatic for people. We're seeing an overall increase in calls. We're seeing an exponential increase in our COVID-related calls. So we're noticing crisis in the community. And so do you still struggle with those thoughts? Top concerns range from extreme anxiety and stress to fears about health issues, relationships, loneliness, isolation, and increasingly job loss and financial stability. They're simultaneously dealing with other stressors, such as being isolated, being disconnected from social supports, losing one's job, being furloughed. I spoke to bilingual crisis counselor April Rosas from her home at the end of a week-long quarantine. We have to put our feelings aside during this because they look for us to be that voice of comfort. There are a few numbers that are important here. The National Suicide Prevention Line, 1-800-273-8255. And the Disaster Distress Helpline, 1-800-985-5990. Important resource for anybody that's feeling anxiety right now. Steve Patterson, NBC News. And when we return here on 17 News at noon, a local gas station is giving back to healthcare workers how those fighting on the front lines can get a free tank of gas. That's a rate more when we return. Well, happening tomorrow, free gas for healthcare workers. That's happening at Ramco Convenience Store on FN 23rd. Owner Remy Batik says it's a way of seeing, saying thank you to those on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. That's happening from 6 a.m. to noon on Tuesday. And Ramco Convenience will also offer the same deal for healthcare workers on Thursday. This is 17 News with continuing coronavirus coverage.